Your forecast first, sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. What a Thursday. Wow, the sunshine, the warmth. The sun now setting there in our roofing dog. I'm at Gibson Area Hospital camera as we find our way into what is going to be a changing next kind of 24 to 72 hours. We've got some clouds starting to roll in here. We will see a much colder day for tomorrow. Still a little bit of a wind around 10 miles an hour. Boy, those temperatures still into the 40s right now. Some of you hit 50 today, but now the temperatures are tumbling and you'll see readings going back down into the teens by tomorrow morning. Then things get fun. We've got rain, snow, ice, all in the forecast, and we'll share it with you when we come back. WCA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. A hospital is trying to spread the word about a COVID treatment, how they say it can help people sick with the virus. Also, COVID restrictions are easing again in parts of central Illinois, what that means for businesses and you. And we told you about a fight involving garden gnomes that escalated to gunfire, who's now facing charges. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. They were seeing very few side effects and far less admissions. I'll just keep it real basic. Hospitals are touting a treatment method aimed at slowing COVID down in high-risk patients. Good evening. I'm Paul Chikini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Memorial Health Systems has been using infusion therapy treatment for two months, and so far it's working. WCI 3's Cole Hanke live in our Capitol Newsroom. So Cole, tell us, how does the treatment work? Well, they hook high-risk patients up to an IV and infuse a synthetic antibody into their blood. But in order for this to work, they need to catch the patient in the earliest stages of their diagnosis before their symptoms get worse and when they're just mild or moderate. The antibody is meant to help stifle symptoms and prepare the body for the fight. Memorial Health System says this treatment also doesn't hurt the body's response at all to future illnesses or have an adverse effect on somebody getting the vaccine later on. Now at this time, we do not feel that there's any, it doesn't inhibit the body's own natural immunity response. And so this is just kind of giving an abuse, a boost before your body can respond to the coronavirus and fight the coronavirus off on its own. This treatment is emergency use only. It is not FDA approved. So it can only be used on high risk patients. And that mostly means people with pre-existing conditions, but can also include anybody 65 or older. And this is also an outpatient, outpatient procedure, meaning that the hospital does not expect people to stay in the hospital after they are treated. Jennifer. Okay. Cole, thank you so much. Now, Memorial Health Systems says they have seen a significant reduction in high-risk patients being admitted to the hospital since they started administering the treatment. They also say there haven't been any side effects from people who have gotten it. Several health departments are offering COVID vaccinations. People in Champaign County can make appointments either at the I Hotel on South 1st Street or at the former dress barn in the Coles Plaza. They'll take place next week and are for people 65 and older. The Macon County Health Department is holding a drug through vaccination clinic tomorrow. It's from 9 to 3 at Richland Community College. It's for healthcare workers, essential workers, and people 65 and older. Today, Region 6 is officially back to just Phase 4. Region 6 covers East Central Illinois from Macon County in the west to Vermilion County over in the east, and then Iroquois County in the north to Richland in the south. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting joins us from our newsroom tonight. Now, Courtney, Restaurants in Region 6 already open for limited indoor dining. How is this going to be different? Well, Paul, this has a big impact on a lot of different types of businesses. For example, manufacturing, child care, and fitness centers. This will be just like things were, if you remember, between June and October. For example, there's now a 50% 50 50 limit or 25% capacity limit for gatherings, for events. Gyms can offer fitness classes, again, with capacity limits and safety guidelines in place. I did talk to the owner of Champagne Fitness Center, and while she says this announcement is exciting, she's having to scramble to make the schedule work. And it changes a lot of things uh, involving our instructors' lives. After being two months off, it's difficult to just snap your fingers and get back at it. It takes a little bit of doing for everyone. 
The changes starting today also allow child care to open safely to in-person instruction. But I did reach out to some daycares in Region 6, and they all told me they already got the green light to open with full capacity earlier this month. Indoor bar service can also come back without the requirement that those businesses, those restaurants also, those bars also have to be serving food while they do that. It also lets movie theaters open with capacity limits as well. Live in the newsroom, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. I know a lot of businesses are happy, and I'm happy to see you now because when I tossed you last time, all I saw was a piano. I could hear <laughs> your voice, but I couldn't see you. All right, Courtney, thanks for that update. Now, while indoor dining is back, there are some limitations. Only 10 people can be in one party. So even a group of more than 10 from the same household would have to separate their group between two tables. So here's a quick look at the latest COVID numbers statewide. More than 4,900 new infections were diagnosed in the last 24 hours, along with 123 additional deaths. 14 of those are from Central Illinois. If there is some good news to be found, six and a half percent is the positivity rate in the state. Police are investigating a shooting that left one man hurt in Champaign. It happened near West John Street in Teal Cove this afternoon. Police say a 37-year-old man was walking when someone shot at him from a car. He was shot in the back, is expected to survive. No arrests have been made. Police are asking anyone with surveillance cameras in that area to contact them. A man was stabbed 17 times in Vermilion County. That's what his friend told us. She says he was hurt by Perrysville Road in Danville. We reached out to the sheriff's office, but they only said there was a, quote, incident in that area, and they've been trying unsuccessfully to get in touch with the victim. Here's an update now. Mattoon police arrested a man they say was involved in a fight that ended with gunfire. This happened Monday at Edgar Avenue and 17th. Martavius Coger is being is accused of battering a minor there. Police say he then came back with two others and got into a fight with a group of adults. They say that led to garden gnomes being thrown and then gunshots. We have new information on last month's deadly crash in Alney. Michael Maddox pleaded not guilty to murder in court today. He's being held on one and a half million dollars bond. Police say the 60 year old crashed into the outdoor patio at Deuces Wild Saloon and hit two women standing on the patio. Both 48 year old Deanne Richardson and 69 year old Judy Jordan died. There's an update on a Springfield woman facing animal cruelty charges. Taryn Goodwin pleaded not guilty this morning. She was first charged back in December. Police say the remains of a dog were found in her home. They say she abandoned the animal there without proper food or water. Carbon emissions are down in the U.S. Why experts say COVID restrictions played a big part. Plus this. This is a wartime undertaking. It's President Biden's first full day in office, the steps he is already taking to fight the pandemic.